Engines are used to speed. There are 3,000 rapid chargers here, one for every 30 miles of road. That's 10 times more than in Scotland. They're part of an overall network of more than 17,000 chargers. Norway began extending its network using public and private funding 17 years ago. This academic was involved in that project and says since then EV ownership has exploded. The last six months, meaning 2022, 78% of all sold cars are pure electric. So pretty soon uh, there will be 100% and from 2025 the government has announced they will ban the sales of all petrol and diesel cars. In Scotland, we've got about the same number of publicly owned chargers as you've got just in Oslo. Mm. How much does that need to change? Uh, it needs to be speeded up uh, because if you don't have a good charging infrastructure, people will get very frustrated. Uh, and you also have to develop systems where people can charge from home. Um, in, in much more than they do today. In Norway, this is um, possible more, more or less everywhere. Norway has been on this journey for decades longer than most. EV drivers have enjoyed cut price parking, ferries and tax exemptions. But this didn't come out of nowhere. It happened because of an unlikely collaboration between Professor Rostvik, this leading environmental activist and the 1980s superstar pop group, AHA. Frustrated by the lack of enthusiasm for EV technology, they imported Norway's first electric car in 1989. It was a Fiat Panda. Today we've reunited them to recreate that photo with a modern day electric Fiat. Like that, yeah. So big smiles all around. They used their original car to rack up fines by skipping toll booths and driving in bus lanes. The car was impounded and then bought back by supporters 12 times. It worked. The Norwegian government created the best electric vehicle incentives in the world. AHA's lead singer, Morten Harkett, attracted a lot of attention for the stunt. Did you feel like you were a rebel? I don't really I think I thought of myself as a rebel, I, uh, but then again, um, I, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I didn't feel I was entering into the role of a rebel really. I, I, I realized that that's what it was, but it was just necessary, it was what we needed to do and it made, just made every sense, you know. While AHA brought the star quality, for all four, this was a serious campaign. Uh, the car was a symbolic thing, right? So, because okay. there was only two seats and you guys drove it, and obviously with Morton there, it created also press. You know, it mm -hmm. became visible. So it wasn't about necessarily embarrassing the government. It was more about getting focus on yeah. this as a potential future uh, game changer. But it went 45 kilometers, so it was not... It was, it and was then early days. And had to charge for 48 hours, yeah. right? <laughs> so you then collectively imported the first one into Norway. What was that like, receiving that and, and actually having that on Norway's roads? Well, the government tried to put all kinds of different attempts at taxing it, which we refused because it was just rubbish. It was a diesel tax. It took, it took a year to pave the road and with this little Fiat Panda for the regulations in Norway. And you broke the rules along that way quite deliberately. From then on, yes. Well, that, that... You wanted to embarrass the government, did you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we had to, we, we had to, to change the regulations uh, in order to invite uh, this type of thing to, to, well, to have a chance of happening at all. Well, before we did this with importing the electric car together, uh, it was only problems, focusing at the problems. Mm -hmm. This was one of the first topics where we focused at the solution. That little car paved the way for free parking in the city for electric cars with charging stations, and no paying of the toll booth, driving in the taxi lane. 
Norway now is a very different place. There are electric vehicles on every street, chargers on every corner. For this country, a future with fully electric transport is in sight. But it's still not quite there yet. Why do you feel it is so important that what you started 33 years ago is continued? But it's interesting how now, 33 years later, we are the grown-ups. And we have kids, all of us. And we have a responsibility to our own families and to our own uh, nation and to, to the global community. Our hands are, are black from the oil that we got a rich of. And, and I think we carry a certain responsibility in, in, in being in front and leading the way uh, for that reason. Morton, how optimistic are you about the future? I am in, in, with the thought that the world only looks the way it does today because we keep it that way. Here's the upkeep of, every, of how we do things, how we go about things. It can change very fast mm. if we choose to change.